Hello and welcome to Around the Air Force. I'm Senior Airman Renee Carberry. Defense Department officials will reduce the number of TRICARE Prime service areas in the United States beginning October 1st. The reduction affects about 171,000 retirees and their families. According to the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Health Affairs, the change will have no impact on active duty or their families. For the full story, visit Athlink. Pilots at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio, take to the virtual sky in a new C-17 simulator, which provides realistic training while saving the Air Force money. Matthew Klaus tells us more. It's a beautiful, sunny morning. Not a cloud in the sky. A perfect day to fly a C-17. But then, something goes terribly wrong. Is the plane going to crash? Of course not. How can you crash if you're not really flying? For emergency procedures, we can't really simulate having an engine fire go. We could simulate it, but it's not as realistic as if we could do it in here because we could actually shut down the engine where we can't shut down an engine, you know, in flight. Wright-Patterson Air Force Base is home to the 445th Airlift Wing. The wing has 11 C-17s, 10 that fly, and one that just feels like it. The simulator is 30 feet tall and sits on three hydraulic legs. The legs let the simulator move up and down, left and right, giving pilots the closest experience outside of flying, well, a real C-17. So you don't have to wait around for a local, you know, a couple hours beforehand, go fly for four hours. You can just come over here, jump in the simulator, you know, and get uh, currency done within about 10 or 15 minutes. And pilots aren't the only ones getting currency. The cost savings of flying in the simulator compared to a real C-17 sortie is $20,000 per hour currency the Air Force needs to save during these fiscally tough times. Before there was a simulator here, they would have had to travel, I think, down to Mississippi to get their training, and of course that costs money. So the more simulators at different sites we can have, the less travel costs we incur, and then you don't have to worry about spending money on fuel, on the air crew to get the aircraft ready. Second Lieutenant Daniel Roberson is a training systems engineer. He works in the Air Force Life Cycle Management Center Simulators Division at wright Pat. They're responsible for every simulator in the Air Force, from the day it's purchased to the day it's delivered. They give airmen real-world training in a virtual world. The technology nowadays allows for these simulators to be super high fidelity. You get inside of that simulator and you feel like you're in the real airplane, especially when it's up on motion and with the visual systems we have. 50. But what do the pilots think? So the simulator is a perfect simulation of what the aircraft actually does display. And that's virtually what the Real World Simulators Division wants to hear. Reporting from Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, I'm Matthew Klaus. The A-10 Thunderbolt II is known by some as the flying gun. Air Force Staff Sergeant Sean Bryant took a trip to Bagram's flight line to watch airmen load the weapon system, which led to this nickname. The most used piece of the A-10's arsenal would have to be the General Dynamics Avenger cannon, which can fire up to 4,200 rounds per minute. This feat would be virtually impossible without the maintenance professionals on the ground who load the aircraft's ammunition daily. And this is the ALA, also known as the Dragon. One end is hooked up to the cans, the other end is hooked up to the jets, brings the ammo out of the cans and into the jet as other ammo is coming out. It's a pretty quick procedure. It's, uh, it doesn't go right, it can ruin your day, but it's usually pretty fun. The amount of time it takes to have an aircraft fully loaded and back in the fight varies depending on the crew of airmen loading it. Well, crew now is pretty quick. Um, we're pretty much, I think we're faster than all the other crews that ammo loads. Uh, when it comes to full uploads of bombs and stuff, you know, there might be another crew that's somewhat close to us, but when it comes to ammo loads, we're the fast. I think we're the best. The members of Crew 9 boast they are able to accomplish this task in only 30 minutes, sometimes less. Air Force Staff Sergeant Sean Bryant, Bagram Airfield.